Hey everybody, Fred Krupp coming to you from Santa Maria, California. And I trust that God is watching over you and uh, that you are strengthening yourself in the Lord. Come on. Hey, today uh, I want to continue in my series, which is I'm teaching a series of foundational, the basic foundations of the Christian life, which is found in Hebrews chapter 6, verses 1 and 2. And here's what the writer of Hebrews says. He says, therefore, leaving the discussion of the elementary or basic principles of Christ, let us go on to maturity, not laying again the foundation of repentance from dead works, faith toward God, the doctrine of baptisms, of laying on of hands, resurrection of the dead, and of eternal judgment. So here, the writer lays out some basic foundations of the Christian life. And if as we go forward now, we're into 2021. Can you believe it? But as we go forward, we want to I wanted to make sure that you are, you know, I did a message here a while back called, have you checked your foundation lately? <clears throat> so if we're going to go forward, and that's what it says, if we, this will do if God permits, if we're going to go forward, then we have to make sure we're building our Christian life on a solid foundation. <clears throat> so in my last session, I talked to you about the first one, which was repentance from dead works. I titled it True Repentance. So if you want to watch that, it's on my YouTube channel, or you can go back and watch in the Facebook uh, postings of it as well. And again, if you're joining us on Facebook right now, you'll want to share this immediately with your friends, start a watch party, uh, let people know that, that somebody, you know, th I'm sure there's a lot of great teachers out there, and uh, but I just want to, my focus is to help you to have a successful, vibrant, Holy Spirit-filled Christian life, that you are bearing fruit for God. And so I just want to read uh, scripture. So today I'm going to be talking, in fact, today and the next probably two sessions, I'm going to talk about the next foundation, which is the foundation of faith toward God, faith toward God. And so uh, today in this session, I want to accomplish two things. Number one, I want to talk about what's the big deal about faith or why is faith so important. I'm pretty sure by the end of what I share with you over the next few minutes, uh, you're going to be pretty convinced that faith is a pretty big deal and it's pretty important for you to understand faith. The second thing I want to share with you, so the first one again is, why is faith a big deal? Why is it important? Number two, and that is, what is faith? So we want to begin to define faith. And then we'll go on in the next session and talk about uh, how faith works, how does faith come, so on, and uh, and how to activate your faith. So for, for right now, I just want to start with one scripture, Hebrews 6, 12. Hebrews 6, 12, it says, the writer says that you not do not become sluggish, but imitate those who through faith and patience inherit the promises. Do not become sluggish, but imitate those who through faith and patience we inherit the promises. So obviously right away, it's talking about the way you inherit the promises is through faith. Uh, and here's another version of that. This is the New Century version. Uh, he writes, we do not want you to become lazy. Be like those who through faith and patience will receive what God has promised. So there you go. So let's pray. Let's ask the Holy Spirit to speak to us as we talk about the foundation of faith toward God. So Father, we thank you right now for your grace. We thank you for your power. We thank you, Holy Spirit, that you're the teacher. We welcome you, mighty Spirit of God. We ask you to teach us and guide us into all truth. As we share your word, make it alive to each and every one of us, I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Can you say amen to that? Well, I'm praying for you, all those of you who are watching uh, the, my uh, either my YouTube channel or you're watching on the Healing Rooms uh, YouTube channel or Healing Rooms Facebook as we do this, or even I have an As You Go Ministries is the name of our ministry, my wife and I, Pam. And uh, As You Go means as you go, uh, preach the gospel, right? As you go about your day, be a representative of Jesus. So we're talking about faith. Now, the first thing again I wanted to say is that I want to talk about why is faith a big deal? Okay, well, here's some reasons why 
faith is such a big deal. Number one, we're saved by faith. This is found in Ephesians 2, 8. By grace, you have been saved through faith. It's not of yourselves. It's a gift of God. So right from the starters, you can't be saved. You can't be born again except by faith. Number, here's another one. Number two, we please God by faith. Hebrews 11, 6, which I hope you have memorized, it says, but without faith, it's impossible to please him. Him is God. It's impossible to please him for he who comes to God must believe that he is, that he exists, and that he's a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. So I'm sure if you're watching this right now, you want to please God. And one of the major keys to pleasing God is by faith. It says, without faith, it's impossible to please God. So the only way we can actually please God is through our faith. Number three, we're justified by faith. The word justified uh, means just as if we had never sinned. So we're justified before God by faith. That's found in Romans 3 and verse 28. It says, therefore, Paul says, we conclude that a man is justified by faith apart from the deeds of the law. So we're not justified by good works. We're not justified by doing the right thing. We're not justified by our own righteousness, but we're justified by faith apart from the law. The law by keeping the law will not justify you before God because you have to keep it perfectly. Number four, we access God's grace by faith. That's Romans 5, 2. It says, through whom also we have, through Jesus is talking about, through whom we also have access by faith into this grace in which we stand and rejoice in the hope of the glory of God. So grace, what is grace? I talked about in another message where if you go back and watch it, grace is the desire, the power, and the ability to do the will of God. And so how do we access God's grace? Well, we access it according to, uh, to Romans 5 2 by faith. So that's how we get into grace, is by faith. Here's another one, kind of a big deal, number five, and that is that we receive the baptism and filling of the Holy Spirit by faith. This is Paul in Galatians chapter 3, verse 2. He says, I only want to learn from you. Did you receive the Spirit by the works of the law or by the hearing of faith? So the way we get baptized or filled with the Spirit, and by the way, if you have not been baptized in the Spirit, you need to be baptized in the Spirit. First off, you need to be baptized in water, and then you need to be baptized in the Spirit. Uh, it's just real, going to be a real challenge to live this Christian life without being filled with or baptized in the Holy Spirit. And how do we get there? We get baptized in the Holy Spirit by faith. Amen. We receive it by faith. Number six, we overcome the tem temptations of the world by faith. Now, well, how do we, what do we do? We're like everybody, we get tempted, temptations come our way. And how do we overcome temptations? Great question, huh? <laughs> and the answer is found in 1 John chapter 5, verse 4. It says this, it says, and whatever is born of God overcomes the world. And this is, now listen to this, this is the victory that overcomes the world our faith. So we overcome the temptations and struggles that we're in in the world by faith. Come on, somebody. Can you say amen to that? Here's another one. Number seven, we receive wisdom from God by faith. Now, I don't know about you, but I need lots of wisdom, right? We need wisdom every day. And I recommend you pray for wisdom every day. Well, how do we get wisdom? James, the brother of Jesus, and was the leader of the church in Jerusalem, he writes these words in James chapter 1, verses 5 and 6. He says, if any of you lacks wisdom, I raise my hand, I lack wisdom, let him ask of God, who gives to all liberally without reproach, and it will be given to him. But let him ask in faith without any doubting. For he who doubts is like the sea, storm-tossed sea. And let that man who think, you know, will not, who doesn't believe will not get anything from God, he says. And so James chapter 1, verses 5 and 6 
If you lack wisdom, you ask in faith. So by faith, we receive wisdom from God. Do you need wisdom today? Well, guess what? You can ask God for wisdom, and he has promised in his word that if you receive it by faith, you ask and believe and receive, then you'll receive divine wisdom. Pretty cool when you get the wisdom of God. Number eight, we obtain the promises of God by faith. That's found in Hebrews 11.33. It says this, and this is, by the way, chapter 11 of Hebrews is the whole chapter that's all about faith. There's a whole chapter in the New Testament that's dedicated to one topic, and the topic is faith. And here in chapter 11, verse 33, it says this, Now through faith they subdued kingdoms, they worked righteousness, and guess what? They obtained promises. Amen. And so how do we obtain the promises of God? There's like something like 7,000 different promises of God in the Bible. How do we get those promises? Well, we get them by faith. He obtained the promises of God by faith. Here's another one now. Number nine, we receive healing by faith. This is pretty evident as you read through the New Testament over and over again. When Jesus, when people came, <clears throat> excuse me, and came to Jesus to receive healing, he would ask them a question, do you believe I can do this? And, and the, you see the recorded response. They said, yes, Lord, we believe. Then he, he would say, according to your faith, be it done unto you. And they were healed immediately. Mark 5, 34, the woman with the issue of blood. She was healed because of her faith. And it says she heard about Jesus and she believed and she got up and she went to find Jesus. And as she was going, she kept saying over and over again, I believe that if I just touch the hem of his garment, I will be made whole. And when she touched his garment, power came out of Jesus and she was healed of her disease. And Jesus said to her, daughter, your faith has made you well. Go in peace and be healed of all your affliction. So healing comes by faith. Amen. Number 10, we are made strong by faith. Uh, how many of you need strength? You know, I do every day. I need to be strong. The Bible tells us in Ephesians chapter 6, be strong in the Lord and in the strength of your might. Maybe you find yourself right now that you're struggling and you're saying, boy, I just feel weak right now, uh, spiritually, emotionally, mentally. Well, how do I be made strong? Well, we're made strong by faith. Everybody say by faith. Hebrews 11, 34, it says they quenched the violence of fire escaped the edge of the sword. These are all by faith. And out of weakness were made strong, became valiant in battle, and turned to flight the armies of the aliens. So we are made strong. Out of weakness, we're made strong. By the way, those of you that are joining us right now on uh, Facebook, uh, we are talking about the foundations of the Christian life that you're going to need if you're going to go forward in 2021. And uh, we're talking today about the foundation of faith toward God. And we're going to be talking about this over the next couple of sessions as well, because it's such a big topic, we can't cover it in one session. And so right now I'm talking about why is faith such a big deal? So you want to click share right now, you know somebody needs to get their faith encouraged and strengthened. And so why is faith so important? And so we've gone over already uh, 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 so, 10 different reasons why faith is such a big deal. And so the last one we just talked about is that we're made strong by faith. Here's number 11. We lay hold of God's purpose and destiny for our lives by faith. One of my most favorite verses in the Bible is 1 Timothy 6, 12. 1 Timothy 6, 12, it says this. It says, fight the good fight of faith. Lay hold of on eternal life, one version says the eternal life to which you were called and you have confessed the good confession in the presence of many witnesses. So the, we're to fight and lay hold of the purpose and calling of God that's for our lives. And how do we fight? We fight by faith, by faith. He says, fight the good fight. A good fight's when you win. Amen. Faith always wins. Come on, faith always accomplishes what it's intended to do. And so with the way we lay hold or we 
uh, you know, take, begin to active, uh, activate God's plan or God's destiny for our lives is by faith. Amen. Number 12, we're made righteous by faith. Paul in Philippians, in his letter to the Philippian church in chapter 3 and verse 9, he's talking about his own righteousness is not great. It's not going to make it. So he says this, that I may be found in him, Jesus, not having my own righteousness, which is from the law, but that, that which is through faith in Christ Jesus, the righteousness which is from God by faith. So how do we live a righteous Christian life? We live it by receiving the righteousness of God by faith. The Bible says in 2 Corinthians uh, chapter 5, verse uh, 20, I think it's 21, it says that Jesus became sin for us that we might become the righteousness of God in him. Well, how do we become righteous? We don't do it by trying to do righteous things. We become righteous by faith, by receiving the righteousness of God and declaring I am the righteousness of God. Let's do that right now. I am the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. Jesus became sin for me so that I may, might become righteous with his righteousness, not my own righteousness. And that's what Paul is talking about here. He's saying, uh, that, he's saying that my righteousness is not mine, but it's the righteousness that comes by faith. So we receive righteousness by faith. Now, number 13. We're sanctified by faith. This is found in Acts 26, verse 18. Uh, uh, Luke is writing and he talks about uh, Paul's message. And, and he says, Paul said to open their eyes in order to turn them from darkness to light and from the power of Satan to God, that they may receive forgiveness of sins and an inheritance among those who are sanctified by faith in me. Now, maybe sanctified is a big word or I don't know what it means. The word sanctified means separate, separated unto, or separated unto God, or to be holy. We're made holy by faith. Come on. We're sanctified by faith in Christ. That was number 13. Number 14, we live with Christ in us by faith. Now, here's a just powerful, powerful uh, scripture uh, in Galatians chapter 2, verse 20. Paul says this, he says, I have been, past tense, crucified with Christ. It is no longer I who live, but Christ lives in me. And the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by faith in the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. So Paul is saying, now that's, this is wow, this is crazy, right? He's saying that Christ himself actually lives in me and I live by his life in me by faith. So by faith, I believe, and you should believe too, that if you are born again, if you have received Jesus Christ as your Savior, and you have given your life over to him, and when you do that, the Bible says that God himself and Christ himself comes to live inside of you. And how do we live this life? We live it by faith. Number 15, we receive answers to our prayers by faith. Now, I believe that in praying, just praying all kinds of things. Pray, uh, maybe you don't have faith about certain things, pray about them anyway. But here the Bible teaches us in Mark, Jesus himself said, Mark eleven twenty four, he said, therefore, whatsoever things or whatever things you ask or desire, one version says, when you pray, believe that you receive them and you will have them. Another version says, believe that you have received them and you will have them. So it's talking about that when we pray in faith, then we receive what we're asking for. Whatever things you ask for, Jesus said, believe that you have received them and you will have them. So we get answers to prayer by faith. Well, you say, well, I've prayed a whole bunch of prayers and I don't see them getting answered. Well, keep praying them. If they're in the will of God, if they're in the Bible, if they're a promise in the Bible, don't give up. Keep praying like Elijah did when God told him it was going to rain and he prayed seven times or eight times and finally the rain came. He, he kept praying consistently until faith came and guess what? Then the, God answered his prayer. Here's another one, number 16. We accomplish the work of God by faith. 
Amen. That's 2 Thessalonians chapter 1, verse 11. It, Paul's writing says, uh, I, I, Therefore, we pray for you always that you would, God would count you worthy of this calling and fulfill all the good pleasure of his goodness and the work of faith with power. So we work by faith. In fact, one, of the, one day some people asked Jesus, how do we work the works of God? This is John 6, 28, 29. What do we do to work the works of God? Miracles. Well, then they said to him, then they said to him, what shall we do? This is John 6, 28 and 29, the gospel of John. What shall we do that we may work the works of God? And Jesus answered and said to them, this is the work of God that you believe in him whom he has sent. So faith is how we work for God. Amen. And then number 17, we're almost done on just these. Uh, I'm just listing the things, those of you that are joining us on Facebook, why is faith such a big deal? Well, I'm listing uh, 18 different things the Bible tells us that we can have or do by faith. That's why faith is such a big deal. And here's number 17. How many of you have some mountains in your life that are blocking what God has for you or blocking your progress? Well, here's what Jesus said in Matthew 17, verse 20. So Jesus said to them, because of your unbelief, for assuredly I say to you, if you have faith as a mustard seed, you will say to this mountain, move from here to there, and it will move, move, and nothing will be impossible for you. So you say, I don't know how to move this mountain in my life. Well, we move it by faith. Faith in what? Faith in God. Amen. By faith in God. By putting or saying, God, we can't get through this mountain. We need you to move us through this mountain. And finally, number 18, which is proof that every one of you has faith. And that is that we understand that God created the universe by faith. Now, how many of you believe that God created the universe? The stars, amen, the galaxies, the sun and the moon, the planets. Do you believe that God did that? I bet you're shaking your head yes right now. Yes, I believe that. Well, how do you know that? You never were there. You never saw a video of it. I mean... How did you? How do you know? How do you know for sure? Well, the reason you know it is because you know it by faith. That's Hebrews eleven verse three. It says this. This is Hebrews eleven verse three. We understand that God created the universe by faith. By faith, we understand the worlds were framed by the word of God, so that the things which are seen were not made of things that are visible. Now that's pretty wild. So you actually believe that God created the universe, and we understand that by faith. Now, that's a clue to how you function in faith, and by how do you know that? There's only one reason you know it, because the Bible tells you so. Amen. I know this is true because the Bible tells me so. And so we're talking about all the different reasons why faith is such a big deal. Now, I want to go to the second part in the last few minutes that I have on this, on this time, and that is that I want to talk about, so in the first session, I, uh, first part, I talked about why is faith such a big deal. Now, in this part, I want to begin to define, well, okay, uh, you got me, uh, uh, Fred, uh, I believe that faith is a big deal, and, uh, uh, but I, I, what is faith? <laughs> what is faith? Faith, you know, we say it as a word. Uh, it, it's a it's a word that's found, you know, I think I think 178 times or more in the Bible. The word it uses the word faith, so it's kind of a big deal. But what is faith? Well, let me give you some definitions for faith. The first one is just comes from Webster's Dictionary. Here's Webster's Dictionary: Faith is a belief in something for which there is no physical proof. So it's not something that you have any physical proof about. Secondly, it's a state or habit of mind in which we put trust or confidence is placed in some person or thing. A state or habit of mind in which trust or confidence is placed in some person or thing. So when you trust in God, you're activating your faith. That is what faith is. Um, here's another one. And so, by the way, you have faith in a lot of things. If you're sitting in a chair right now, you have faith in that chair. If you got in your car today and you weren't all concerned whether it was going to start or not, you had faith in your car, it would start. Come on. So you have faith in all kinds of things. So faith is a trust or a confidence 
that is placed in some person or something. And here's another definition that Webster's gives us, and that is that faith is the conviction that something is true. So faith is a conviction that something that you can't see, smell, taste, touch, hear, or feel, uh, you believe it's true. Uh, and how do you believe that? You're believing that based on the word of God. Now, someone said, seeing is believing, but that's not faith. Faith is believing when you don't see it. Come on. 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 7, big deal. It says, for we walk by faith, not by sight. The word sight there has to do with all of our senses. So, so here it is. Faith is believing in something that you can't see or sense with your senses. And so we walk by faith, trust in God, and not by sight. Uh, John, the Gospel of John chapter 20, verse 29, Jesus said this. He said to Thomas, who, was, who had doubted him, they call him Doubting Thomas, because Thomas doubted, uh, but he wasn't there when Jesus showed up for the first time after his resurrection. And he said, I, you know, I, I'm not going to believe it until I can see the wounds in his hands and put my finger in it and see the wound in his side and put my hand in it. And so Jesus then, about a week later, appears again to them. And Th Thomas is there. And he said to Thomas, Thomas, because you have seen me, you have believed. Blessed are those who have not seen and yet believe. So again, he's talking about faith. Now, let me switch to the Bible definition of faith, and it's found in Hebrews chapter 11 and verse 1. So those of you who are joining us right now on Facebook, we are uh, talking about the foundation of faith toward God, which is an absolute foundation that you need in your life if you're going to make progress. Listen to this. All progress in the kingdom of God is by faith. All progress. If you're going to go forward in 2021 in your walk with Jesus, you're going to have to do it by faith. So right now I'm talking about what is faith? What's the definition of faith? And specifically now I'm going to give what the Bible calls or what the Bible says is the definition of faith. It's found in Hebrews chapter 11, verse 1. So 11, 1. Here it is. Hebrews 11, 1. Now faith is the substance of things hoped for the evidence of things not seen. That's the New King James Version. The New American Standard Version says this. Now faith is the assurance of things hoped for, the conviction of things not seen. I have a conviction that something's true that you can't tell with your five senses. Here, a really great one is found in the Amplified Bible. In Hebrews chapter 11, verse 1, it says, Now faith is the assurance, the confirmation the title deed of things we hope for being the proof of things we do not see and the conviction of their reality, faith perceiving as real fact what is not revealed to the senses. Wow, that's a mouthful, isn't it? So I just kind of put a little summary here and that is faith is the undergirding assurance and expectation that things are real and will come to pass, things which we cannot perceive with our five senses. So I just want to just highlight just a few things from the Bible definition of definition of faith. And the first thing I want to highlight is that faith is now. It says now faith is. Now faith is. Faith is now. Faith doesn't work in the future. Faith doesn't work in the past. Faith works in the now. And so the I'm convinced the only time that we can have faith is that we activate our faith in the now, right now. So now faith is. So faith isn't like, well, I hope it's going to happen in the future or I wish it would have worked out in the past. But faith is when you believe right now. Uh, Jesus said again in Mark eleven twenty four. 24, he said, when you pray, notice he said, while you're praying, right as you're praying, right now while you're praying, believe that you have received what you're asking for and you will have it. So notice that prayer, faith works in the present tense. It works in the now. Amen. Second thing I want to point out from the Bible's definition of faith, which is now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen, Hebrews 11, 1, is that faith is a real substance. Amen. Here's an interesting thing. In Romans 12, verse 3, 
Paul's writing, he says this, For I say through the grace given to me, to everyone who is among you, not to think of himself more highly than he ought to think, but to think soberly, as God has dealt to each one a measure of faith. God has dealt or given to each one a measure of faith. So like for playing cards, and uh, I, I have four people, I'm playing cards, and I'm dealing the cards, and I deal cards to everybody. So everybody is equal in this, in the sense that everybody has the same amount of cards that I just handed out, so they now have that to function with. So here in Romans 12, 3, faith is a real substance. God has given to every person, believers or unbelievers, God has given to everyone faith. Come on, somebody, that's such a good good promise. Amen? Because notice again, when Jesus healed people over and over, he would ask them, uh, do you believe? And then they would say, yes, we believe. And they said, then well, be it done to you according to your faith. Uh, another one is that, that faith is a real substance. You can see it. Jesus saw it in the four guys who carried their friend who was paralyzed to find Jesus in his house. And they made a hole in the roof and lowered their friend down uh, so that Jesus could uh, they, they went, brought him there so that Jesus would heal him. And it says he looked up and he saw their faith. And their, their faith was evident by their actions. So they had faith because you could see it in their actions. The third thing I, I see about this def, Bible de definition of faith is that faith is the title deed. Remember in, the, in the, uh, uh, the Amplified Version, it says faith is the title deed of things that God has promised us in his word. So the title deed. So faith is the title deed. So we, we're going to be talking about coming up here that faith uh, comes from the word of God. So what if you began to look at the promises of God in the word as the title deed of things that have been purchased for you and belong to you and that by faith you take hold of them. You say, I've got, here it says, by Jesus' stripes, I am healed. Or God will supply all my need according to his riches and glory. Or I'm a more than a conqueror. Amen. Or I am the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. Or I can do all things to Christ who strengthens me. Those are not just statements I'm making. I have a title deed to those things. Your title deed to your, like if you have your title deed to your car, that means nobody else owns the car, you own the car. If you have the title deed to your house, then you own the house. The bank, once you, it's paid off, then you get the title deed. That means it is yours. It belongs to you. If anybody was going to argue with you, and, and the devil wants to argue with you about the promises of God, so if anyone wants to challenge you, you say, wait a minute, I've got the title deed right here. I got the title deed for my healing. I got the title deed for my breakthrough. I got the title deed for my provision. I got the title deed for my strength. I got the title deed for my victory is right here. I've got a title deed. So faith is the title deed to things that have been purchased by God for us. Amen. Amen. Can you say amen to that? And then number four, the fourth thing that I see out of the Bible definition uh, of faith, which is now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen, uh, is that faith is the proof or evidence of, th that, of things that exist that our five senses cannot perceive or detect. Let me read that one again. Faith is the, it's kind of a long statement, faith is the proof or evidence of things that exist that our five senses cannot perceive or detect. And so, um, you know, for example, maybe you can't, there's angels. The Bible says that there are angels and we have angels around us. We have angels that are doing, you know, going back and forth from heaven to earth. The Bible says we're that believers that, that God has sent angels to watch over them, protect them. Well, you, unless you've had a, 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 a supernatural encounter with an angel, you can't see the angel, but that doesn't mean that they're not there. They're there because the Bible says that they're there and faith says they're there and so whatever it would be provision healing all that is in the spiritual realm you live in the natural realm but you lay hold of them in the spiritual realm and bring them into the natural realm by faith so it's believing faith is the proof or the evidence i believe that 
God exists. I believe that Jesus is real. I believe that the Holy Spirit is with me. I believe that Christ is in me, the hope of glory. I believe that I am filled with the Holy Spirit. I believe that I'm the temple of the Holy Spirit. I can't see all those things, but I have, I believe that they, that I have the evidence by faith. I believe that those are a reality. Remember the story, I don't know if you remember the story of Elisha and his servant, and they were in the city, and this great army came to get them, and they surrounded the city, and uh, the, the servant went out, and he saw the army all around, and he was freaking out, what are we going to do, and he went back in, and here's what it says, this is found in 2 Kings chapter 6, verses 15 through 17, it says, now when the servant of the man of God arose early arose early, went out, there was an army surrounding the city with horses and chariots. And his servant said to him, Alas, my master, what shall we do? And so Elisha answered, Do not fear, for those who are with us are more than those who are with them. What? There's just, you know, I imagine the servant looked and said, Okay, Elisha, me, one, two. And you're telling me that there's more with us than with them. And then it says in verse 17, then Elisha prayed and said, Lord, I pray, open up his eyes that he may see. And then the Lord opened his eyes and the young man saw and he said, the, behold, the mountain was full of horses and chariots of fire all around Elisha. Wow, that's incredible. So faith is the proof or evidence that things exist that you cannot perceive with your five senses. So here it was. Elisha could see in the spiritual realm and he saw that they were surrounded by God's army. Come on. And it actually then <laughs> ended up defeating the other army and blinding them and leading them back into, uh, into where the king was and so on. That's the whole story. Read the, read the whole chapter, 2 Kings, 2 Kings, not 2 Corinthians, 2 Kings chapter 6, verses 15 through 17. And again, Jesus' words in John 20, 29, Jesus said, Thomas, because you have see, seen me, have you believed? Blessed are those who have not seen and yet believe. And so I want to encourage you, and I just want to end with this now and just pray with you because I want to, again, I wanted to accomplish two things in this teaching, and that is number one, why is faith such a big deal? I gave 18 different things of what we are to have and what we're to do by faith in the Bible, and then I gave you the Bible definition of faith. Now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. Now in our next session, we'll begin to talk about how does faith come and is there different levels of faith and how do we increase our faith and how do we activate our faith. So there's, we'll be covering those in the sessions coming ahead, but for now we're going to end with this. Well, let me pray for you because during these sessions, your faith is going to get stronger and stronger. By the way, Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of Christ. That's why I gave a lot of scriptures here. The more you hear the word, the more faith is going to come into you. So let me pray for you. Father, I thank you for all those that are watching. We're in 2021, and it's time for us to grow in faith and to increase in our faith and to activate our faith. God, you showed me long ago that all progress in the kingdom of God is by faith. And Lord, my heart for everyone that's watching this video is that they make the progress that you have for them. And I pray that as we're talking about the foundation of faith toward God, that you would begin to establish this foundation in my brothers and sisters. Lord, I ask that. And if they need a miracle today, I ask for a miracle in their life. We release faith is now. And I say, now you're healed. Now you're provided for. Now you have the victory. Now God's putting you over the top. Now God's bringing you the breakthrough that you need. Now God's strengthening you with might and power in the inner man. In Jesus' name, if you receive that right now, say amen. Well, God bless you. I'll look forward to talking to you in the next session. And make sure you share this again with lots of people. Also, I have a YouTube channel under Fred Kropp, K-R-O-P-P, K-R-O-P-P. You can go to Fred Kropp and all the teachings that I've done since last March are there and you can catch up on this series called The Foundations. Have you checked your foundation? Well, God bless you, my brothers and sisters.